Shopping for a new acoustic guitar for yourself or a loved one this season? We have two compelling affordable options under $300 from Yamaha and Fender to show you, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and like our videos. If you'd like to support the channel, visit our Spring Store or Teespring Store, whatever they're calling it, linked below for our custom designed t-shirts. So we have two great guitars, affordable guitars, yep. from Fender and from Yamaha, two of the biggest names in acoustic guitars at this price point. And we're big fans of a lot of their models. These are interesting because they're very similar in price point, and they're very similar-ish in what they offer you. Yeah. So I've got this, the Yamaha F1HC, mm -hmm. and you've got... I've got the Fender CD60S, and it's Does worth... Does the S stand for super? I think so, yeah. Um, it stands for Sutaway or yeah. Selectronics. There you go. Um, I think it's worth bringing up... We Not too long ago, we did something very similar. Mm -hmm. You would have been holding the F... 325D, mm -hmm. and I would have been holding the FA-115, because mm -hmm. those were two packs. One of these is also a pack, and one's not. Sort of. Stick around to yeah. find out <laughs> right now. So tell us about the F1HC. This one is not a pack, so you don't have to wait that long. There we go. So the HC in the F1HC stands for hard case. It's that one. That's the case that you get with this guitar. And price point on this is under $250. So it's a pretty compelling guitar. It's an acoustic guitar with a solid top. We've done videos in the past talking about step-up model guitars, and one of the things that I recommend people look at on their first guitar or their next guitar is at least a solid top because that's where most of your sound on the acoustic guitar comes from. And if it's not solid, if it's laminate, it's not going to move very much because of it's, it's so strong from the layers, and it's never going to sound better. But solid wood flexes more, it gives you more uh, dynamic range, it gives you better tone, and over time it ages, and so it sounds better. So this guitar has that, and you get a hard shell case for under 250 bucks. So pretty compelling value proposition. What you got, Fender? So I, I heard that the S actually does stand for solid. It does. Yeah, so this is a solid top dreadnought guitar as well. Does not come with a hard case, but it is a pack that mm. comes with a few things I'd like to show you now. You want me to grab the guitar? It's all good. You we got can, it? Yeah, so. Look at how talented you are. Yeah, just multitasking. Uh, first off, like most of the Fender stuff, you know, I think, does everything come with three months of Fender play? I, at this point, I think it does. Um, yeah, so you get three months of Fender play lessons, which is nice. That's a nice little added bonus, but not technically the pack. Uh, the pack refers to a set of strings, a strap, some picks, and you're not hard case. You got yourself an, an okay little gig bag. It's not going to do much to protect. It's a little soft. Protect. It's a little flaccid. Little, yes, I guess that is a synonym that doesn't have another connotation. Right. Um, so that's the big thing here. I, you're going up against a few accessories and still something to, to carry your guitar around versus no accessories and a really nice hard case. Yeah, it's a pretty nice hard case for sure. Um, the guitars themselves, much like the two others that we compared, are very similar. Yeah, they're both dreadnoughts. They both have solid tops. Now, I'm gonna say this about the Yamaha. Before we started, I took my phone and I threw it inside the guitar. I didn't throw it. I very gingerly placed it, more out of the concern of the phone, really, um, so that I could see what was inside the guitar. And the reason I did that, why do you think? Because I don't usually do that. <sighs> the only thing worth seeing inside of an acoustic guitar, besides the dust bunnies, mm -hmm. would be the bracing. And, and they don't tell you what it is. They don't, which is an important thing. It's an important thing. So I basically, Yamaha has gone, this is an affordable acoustic guitar with a solid top and a case for the people who are starting out, and you really don't care about the rest of that stuff. Yeah. But in case you do, and you'd like to know, they both have scalloped bracing. Shaping's a little different, mm -hmm. but they both have scalloped bracing. And now what that does, the bracing, which we've talked about on this channel before, but if you're new to guitar, it is the internal structure that supports the top. 
without bracing. If you put these guitar strings connected to the bridge and this top, and you tune them up to pitch, the top would just go, it would just break because of all of the tension of these strings. So bracing is utilized to provide structure, but you're trying to balance that with flexibility because we just talked about the whole benefit of a solid top is flexibility to give you that sound, that volume, and that tone. And so manufacturers have different shapes and designs for the bracing to provide strength and flexibility. And one way of doing that is scalloping, which basically removes some of the material on the bracing. We're not talking about scalloped potatoes. We're talking about scalloped bracing. I wish bracing. we were talking about scalloped potatoes. Maybe later, because I'm getting hungry. But what they do is they literally scoop or carve chunks of the wood out of the brace. So there's parts where the brace has a peak and where it has valley, and that allows it to have structural rigidity in, in certain po points, and then that flexibility in other points. And I think it's an important Pretty thing. Smart. It, yeah. yeah. About 20 years ago, only high-end guitars had scalloped bracing. And now with CNC manufacturing, it's not as big of a deal to have scallop bracing in a guitar. Yeah. And both of these have it along with the solid spruce tops. Yeah, and both of these, to your point, it's hard to pin down for Fender and Yamaha acoustics a ton. I mean, it's in a weird limbo on online, not a ton of specs. It's hard to find the classifications of these different series. Mm -hmm. I know this because I've been working through it on our website and trying to assign the correct series. It's it's weird because, th like this guitar, CD, classic design, mm -hmm. but the CC is also classic design, so obviously CD isn't, you know, it's, it's dreadnought. dreadnought, but it's classic dread. So it's it's weird. It's nice to be able to have this physical proof. This is under the proof. F yeah. series. F series, yeah. But not the FG series. Not the FG, FGX, not any of that stuff. No. Um, and, you know, the FGX5, you know, that's, a, <laughs> that's, totally that's the different Red Label series. Um, so, and you probably don't care about any of this if you're starting out, but as you start going through guitars and you sort through stuff, all of this becomes very apparent. Yeah, and the biggest deal uh, when it comes to a guitar like this is, and I don't need you to spoil anything, but do you hear a big difference between the two? I do. Yeah. So do you want to play him? I will. So I'm going to do that now. Check it out.
So there you have it, a comparison between these two guitars, really quick comparison between them, but you get an idea of the tonal differences. And like I say with most of the time, with, when we're comparing like Fender and Yamaha or any other manufacturer, it comes down to the sound of that company. There is mm -hmm. a there's a, a idea of what the tone is, and regardless of the style of the guitar, everything is meant to create that tone. Yeah. And I think these two accomplish that. And so this guitar provides for me what we hear in a lot of the more expensive Yamahas, which is a kind of girthier sound. There's a bit more low end to it. Um, the volume's about the same, but I just, I hear less treble, a little bit more mid and low end on this guitar. And on the Fender, there's more treble. That's interesting. I mean, I, I can hear that for sure. I think that they're both good options. I am interested in what you think about if you had, if you were looking to spend less than 300 on an acoustic guitar and you had these two choices, which do you think is the better value? Well, they're both incredibly compelling values, but if I was brass tacks, had to choose one, I would choose the Fender. And I'm going to tell you why. I think the benefit of the additional stuff that you get with it is great, but that's not the reason. It's the playability. So I think Fender made a very smart choice years ago when they redesigned these classic design guitars and they went with scalloped bracing, they did another thing. They shortened the scale length a little bit. So most of the time, a full size scale length is 25 and a half inches, that's 25.3. They also rounded the radius more, making it a little bit more almost electric guitar-like, but not. Yeah. And I don't know if you've noticed, but the sides of the fretboard are rounded. Which is not typical. Yeah, that does feel on any good. acoustic guitar, let alone one at this price point. And it makes a lot of sense because these guitars are designed for beginners, mm -hmm. and so the comfort of the playability really comes into play. Now, that doesn't mean that this is not a joy to play. It feels pretty good, particularly for the price point. The action's slightly higher. You have the typical sides of the frets. It's not rounded off here. I do prefer the satin finish of the neck on the Yamaha, we've talked about this in other videos like this, yeah. to the glossy, mm -hmm. but it's not really that sticky, and most people probably wouldn't notice anyway. So that's a preference I have here, but everything else I think on playability is better on the Fender. That's interesting. I thought, I thought that you were gonna go for the Yamaha, um, because, so I, I like that you're thinking of it as like a, in the long run, mm -hmm. this will be more comfortable, and I agree with that. If it were me and it was like in the moment I needed a guitar for tonight, mm -hmm. um, I think I might take the Yamaha because my thought process is a pack of strings, a strap, and some picks. Small it's an easy little add-on, yeah. you know, a few bucks here, you know, for each of those. Um, a hard case and a nice one like that um, is, I think, start probably around eighty or ninety dollars, and then they go up from there. There's really expensive hard cases. I think if you're trying to invest you know a modest amount of money into starting guitar um, you'll be less inclined to add on a hard case because it comes out to be pretty you know a pretty big chunk of the price of the guitar you know as well well that's what's interesting about these because they, they they're both around the same price yeah i think this one's slightly more mm -hmm. but it comes with a hard shell case yeah and to your point that's not an inexpensive sum yeah yeah in the grand scheme of things but i think that one as an instrument is a little more dialed in out of the box than this one. Yeah. Now, between these two, if I had the money, I'd probably buy an FG800 from Yamaha, Yep. and then just have to pony up for a case. This is less expensive than an FG800. The FG800 is a better guitar. So, yep. you know, all things being equal. But between these two, and if I'm looking for something, if I only have that much money, about $250, I think they're both compelling options for just slightly different reasons. Yeah. They both have a few of the components of the good step-up formula that yeah. will make the guitar last a lot longer yeah. and sound a lot better over time. If I was Yamaha, I would advertise that this comes with scalloped bracing. So Come on, guys. Save me some time. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, they're both great guitars. If you'd like more information about them, go to our website, alamomusic.com. You can chat with an associate live on our website. Sometimes that associate's Cooper. Sometimes it's not. Um, most of the time it's not, but you might get lucky one day and it's Cooper. The other guys kick me off because they want the time. Well, there you go. But nevertheless, we can help you sort through all of the choices, talk about options like this. 
what would sort, uh, serve you best as a guitarist and help you find the guitar to meet your needs. At the end of the day, we always say the best guitar in the world is the one that you're playing. And that means you have a guitar in your hands, you're happy with your selection, it's easy to play and you're enjoying it. We wanna help you do that. So if you're shopping for yourself or for someone else and you found this video, reach out to us and we will help you find the perfect guitar to meet your needs. If you're new to the channel, what should they do? You got to subscribe to the channel because especially with stuff like this throughout the rest of the year, we got all these nice comparisons because we know that you guys want guitars for the holidays. Um, so you got to keep up to date with that, but turn on your notifications because if you're not checking YouTube all the time, you know, we're putting out three videos a week. So you got to know what's coming out and what's exciting. Because we have a boss. And he's like, Whoosh. yeah, Whoosh. I think it's a, he would like it to be seven videos a week, <laughs> but we do push back on that. So yeah, and definitely like the videos. It lets others who have similar interests to you know that we did something good. And if you don't like the video, then, uh, then don't click the like button. But uh, nevertheless, keep coming back and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>